Hey everyone, I'm using the Gilded Tarot for our weekly reading from Monday the 14th of October through to Sunday the 20th of October. So I'm setting the intention for a reading for the highest and greatest good. For the collective or anyone who views this video and as always, take what resonates and just put the rest to one side. So I'm asking for a card for Monday. We have the Tower for Monday. For Tuesday, the Fool. Wednesday, the Eight of Wands. Thursday, the Death. Friday, the World. Saturday, the Sun. And Sunday, the Four of Swords with the Eight of Cups. Okay. So we have on Monday the Tower. So things are really starting to fall now. We're coming through to the end of Pluto in Capricorn, really dissolving now the old structures, dissolving the old systems that were run purely from a materialistic point of view. So things starting to fall and we'll feel this not only in the collective but also in our personal life. So things that have been our life starting to change because as we've come through these eclipses this eclipse season and the final solar eclipse there in Libra closing out the eclipse season we are being shifted onto our soul path and our ego may be finding some difficulty with that so things starting to change feeling the uncomfortableness of that change especially with the tower homes shifting feeling like we are on unstable ground so what i'm feeling with this card is things are falling apart to rebuild in a spiritual way, in a holistic way. So feeling the energies of our soul coming into alignment now and our ego finding some discomfort with that, really grounding ourselves. So this is a positive card. It means that everything that is blocking us from moving forward and blocking us from our higher timelines, all those situations in our life that we really did not want to look at are coming now really quickly. And parts of us may want to push them away and go into resistance but this is a cycle that is in a powerful process now as we are moving through our ascension so things may be falling and you can see there he is naked coming from the tower and this is things being shown to us no one can hide anything any longer because the truth is becoming transparent where the truth is what we are all tuning into. So there's 
not no one can cover anything any longer so this is seeing everything from the eyes of our soul not from the eyes of our ego Tuesday the fool going on a new path and you can see there there is the clown and he is juggling with the star constellations the moon there is in the background and he is starting to listen to the guidance of the cosmos not his head not his ego knowing that there is a bigger plan that we're all breaking out now the the old familiar is holding us into a place of of limitation now we're breaking from that and we are allowing our innermost aligned pleasures and desires to guide us this is a activation of spiritual gifts that as we come into alignment with our soul self they start to activate within us guide us on our path so this is something new opening up a new path opening but with the promise of happiness Wednesday the 8th of ones things starting to move quickly once we let go and realize we can't fix anything that's falling apart now as we start to let go and really focus on where we are being pulled where our heart is guiding us things start to move really quick so Wednesday is a beautiful day of things all falling into alignment Wednesday is the healing moon as well so if anything it is starting to feel a little bit unsteady if old emotions are coming to the surface whatever may be occurring from our old belief systems from our ego still wanting to to hold on Wednesday is the perfect day to do the writing and burning, to do the ritual, light a candle, look into the candle with the challenges that may be occurring in our lives and then blow the candle out. So there's lots of different rituals that we can use on the healing moon to cleanse ourselves as we're moving through this powerful Thursday which is the full moon in Aries and you can see this is the death the death and rebirth so the old is falling away nothing now is going to stop it any kind of upset that it's bringing up with us that is a emotional entanglement that will only cause us to to become drained, fatigued, to worry over things that we have no control over. So all that falling away, things may be coming to the surface for us to be able to look at on this full moon. This is the full moon in Aries that is in conversation with Chiron, Chiron in the North Node, the the head of the dragon this is the direction in which we are moving and Chiron is the sacred healer so anything that is coming to the surface of any wounds of our I am will be coming to the surface to be able to let go of to to be able to transmute and dissolve and alchemize so this powerful full moon so we have the ruling planet of Aries is Mars and Mars is in the zodiac sign of Cancer so Cancer 
is the very nurturing sign, it's the feminine, but likes to dwell in the past, bring things up from the past. And we are being encouraged to let things now dissolve, to not keep bringing them forward and projecting them into our future. So there is a ending, but it's not an ending of anything of love or anything that is in our soul connection, on our soul path. It's an ending of what isn't. It's an ending of the falseness. And today also, Venus moves into Sagittarius, which is very positive. Very positive. This is passionate. So as we let go of the old that may have never really fulfilled us, that we always felt something was missing or we didn't feel wholly ourselves. On Thursday, as Jupiter makes a move into Sagittarius and we have this death of the old emotions, the cellular memory, that we have been conditioned into and we, make, and we step into a freedom from that, a freedom from those painful emotions, a freedom from the limitations that we placed on ourselves or allow other people to place upon us. The sun there is in Libra opposing this full moon in Aries. So Libra is being activated and Libra is our relationship with others and as we form a respectful relationship with ourselves, then the relationships all around us come into alignment. So there's a death of things that aren't in our soul alignment. Um, a connection and a vibrational match especially with Venus moving into to Sagittarius. I love Sagittarius. It is the half horse, half man, the centaur with his bow and arrow facing into the horizon. So Venus is asking us to focus on love, to dream big, to actually step into those experiences expansion of love and our most beautiful imaginings, keeping our feet on the floor, uh, keeping ourselves grounded, but feeling those feelings. So there's the death of the old coming through with this full moon and it is a super moon in Aries. I think it's about the fourth super moon we've had the, the full, uh, full moon super moon. So this is very powerful. The emotions, the moon is all around our emotions. And this is where the sun and the moon are communicating. The sun in Libra, the moon in Aries, the moon, our feelings. So being mindful that we don't go into a, a reaction that these triggers that may come to the surface that we don't go in and cause havoc, that we really keep ourselves realising that these uncomfortable emotions may be coming to the surface or not. We may sail through this full moon, but if any uncomfortable emotions do come to the surface, get in the bath, light the candle, blow it out, do the writing and burning, whatever it may be, whatever is bothering you that keeps bothering you when coming up maybe some kind of um, obsessive thought whatever it may be visualize really do the healing work on this full moon of letting all that dissolve and move away so that we can see 
the truth. We can, these are veils of illusion are falling. The veils of forgetfulness, we are, be, we are remembering who we are. The veils of limitation, we are seeing that we are limitless. The veils of separation, we are now seeing that we are one. And we, however we treat another, ultimately we are treating ourselves that way. Everything is a mirror, everything is looking back at us like the all of mirrors. So this is the wisdom that we've attained, that we are now really merging with. It's becoming our practice, it's becoming our way of life. It, we've been practicing, it's now becoming our way of life that we do just forgive in that moment, forgive ourselves, do the oh no, pono, pono, I am sorry, please forgive me, I love you, thank you, for anything that may rise up from the past. And this is forgiving ourselves for the stress that we're putting on our bodies, for the forgiving the divine, that we're all one and thanking, thanking for coming into these experiences so that we can face our karma and cleanse it and release it into that alchemization of rebirth. So Thursday this full moon very, very powerful and also Venus moving into Sagittarius is very auspicious. Friday we have the Five of Cups in the world. So again, this is the death of the grief. So we have all gone through these shifts. We've been all been going through maybe some challenges that we kept putting off or we, some challenges we may not have seen coming but they have because they're no longer in alignment with our path they've presented themselves so it can feel a time of grief because things may be may have not worked out the way that we would have like them to or our ego would have liked them to but the two of cups there is standing so there's love there love far greater than what we're moving away from and that is the message that's coming through loud and clear whatever we're facing whatever uncomfortableness we're going to get through this and we'll get through it with ease because there's a powerful force within us now that we're tapping into that's an higher force it's a supreme force because we're connecting to our guides our angels our loved ones in spirit are uh, assisting us through our time of grief and through whatever challenges we may be moving through because ultimately we're stepping into a time of love that we have never known before so this is so auspicious. So when we turn away from looking at what's gone, with looking away at maybe things and injustice that's occurred or whatever it could be, some conflict, especially with this Libra, the sun still in Libra, with relationships that we felt were we we were in a relationship and then it's disbanded for whatever reason and to, to remember souls come in and meet and go through that journey for a period of time, maybe a short time, a long time, it could be a lifetime, but once our soul contract with that other soul is finished, that soul will move on. And we can sometimes take that really personally that can really hurt our hearts but to remember 
our soul is guiding us to ever greater spheres of love. And then we have completion, a completion of this grieving process, a, a completion of whatever upsets there are that are occurring. There's the, the sunrise coming here in this card. So there's a, there's a new day dawning that's filled with love once we turn around and stop looking and dwelling and holding on to what hurt us to just let it go let go with love and as we let go with love these two beautiful two of cups are now waiting for us and then we have the world the world at our feet this is completion moving up into a a new chapter in our lives so we have the fuel fuel on tuesday and the world on Friday. So completions are coming. They may feel uncomfortable, but remember whatever we're facing now, when we face it in a conscious and aligned way, we then create a conscious outcome and Pluto in the last degrees of Capricorn, really closing out those old limiting beliefs, really dissolving now those old structures that we may have placed other people in a place of priority to ourselves, that we we would do things to make other people happy but in turn sacrificing a part of ourselves and that is toxic because that creates a toxic energy of of discord of going into a place of feeling weakened, weakening ourselves to strengthen others. All that's falling away now because as we stand in our own light something beautiful happens and and the positive outcomes start to flow into our lives that we've always tried to fix by placing other people in giving our power away to other people to make them happy once we take that back our desired outcomes start to manifest all around us and this sets us on to a new reality we're moving into this time of of higher higher frequency we're moving into the age of aquarius as Pluto shifts in the 19th, 20th of November into Aquarius and will stay there and won't enter Capricorn for another 250-ish years. So this is generational cosmic shifts that we're going through. And to take through this shift, into the next chapter of our lives, the empowerment, the joy, the love, the um, gratitude. Jupiter is retrograding now through Gemini, who is very is is communicating through this full moon and, and through this week reminding us to go in and find that expansion within, find those areas of ourselves that we may have tucked away to please others and to allow those parts of us now to see the light of day, to actually stretch out and start living. And then, sorry, that was Saturday. Uh, this was Friday. Saturday, we have the sun. The sun, whatever the sun shines on, 
it brings life to. So as Friday we go through after the full moon um, and the closing out of certain out of alignment situations in our lives could bring through some grief and not being able to understand how things were uh, have worked this way but remembering to to tune in and turn to the two of cups and then the sun on saturday is shining upon our path bringing life to our path bringing light into all those disowned parts of ourselves that we have suppressed that we have not even tapped into that beautiful divine expression that's now waking up within each one of us so the sun is in libra again it's relationships so a, a tuning and aligning to the relationships that that are on our frequency not trying to force anything or control anything just let things flow with grace and the sun this is positive energy this is a real shift in where things were really difficult in our lives to a time of things moving in beautiful synchronicity seeing with clarity listening to our intuition the sun is our solar plexus and this is the area of our intuition so being guided with what brings us passion, that aligned passion, feeling it, feeling those beautiful energies, having those thoughts that form in our bodies as beautiful, uplifting feelings and stepping into them. So the sun is shining upon us, shining upon our relationships, harmonious relationships coming into our lives, soulmates coming into our lives. And then Sunday, the healing, the Four of Swords. So from the week, that's very, very deep and very powerful week, astrologically with the, the full moon and the shifting and the alchemization of what's no longer serving us, we might not understand that our soul knows our soul knows those contracts are finished but our ego may want to hold on so sunday we may feel energetically very tired to step out and rest to really allow sunday to be a day of rest of letting go of meditation of alignment of self-healing and because the Eight of Cups there uh, is a shift away from the old. The old that we may have thought was important in our lives at one time, but isn't, it, it doesn't fit any longer. We've outgrown it. We've, we, we don't resonate any longer. And so this creates a... A healing, some time to really breathe, some time to find some peace. You can see there he is moving away again. The sun is shining. He's moving into a new sunrise, a new, a new chapter of our lives. So whatever may be occurring in our lives, whatever challenges. Some it could be big challenges, others it may be just the irritations that keep coming up and then they create something that <laughs> becomes a problem. So whatever it may be, we're moving through this time, we're moving through these veils of illusion constantly, tapping into the truth of who we are, that we're here to live a life that is wonderful, that is joyous. And in order to do so, we have to listen to our soul, 
because our ego will want to make everybody else happy. It will want to give everybody else exactly what we would love. So we're moving that in and treating ourselves and giving ourselves what we would, what we love. So a wonderful week, powerful week as this, this year has been. And during this week as well, I think it's from the 10th to the 19th. If we, the day, the, the day and the date, the end date, all are exactly the same. So Monday the 14th, we have the 1 and 4, which is 5. The 10, which reduces to 1, which is 6. The 20, which is 2, which is 8. The 2, 24, which is 10 and 4 is 10. Uh, it's 14 so uh, so the date and the day all come full circle and on the 17th on the full moon we have the seven the one and seven eight the one for the ten reduced to one which is nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So the full moon is on the 17th. The full date adds up to 17. And the seven and one are eight. And we're in this universal number of eight. So this is really coming to that alchemization of the infinity symbol. Whatever is there in the center, whatever we are finding hard to understand, whatever may be keep presenting itself, place it in one side of the infinity loop and ourselves in the other and let it work through us and alchemize in the center. Let it alchemize and dissolve any blocks that are uh, stopping us from moving forward. So all week we have this accumulation and these numerology activations so it's completion, completion, completion. So anything that is still running out, play, playing out in our lives, is coming up to be completed so that we can, our soul can move forward freer and happier. So I'm sending so much love. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And thank you for listening. Thank you.